hello BC and to whoever's watching. So it's uh, vinyl tech season and I thought I'd put in my answers too to those 20 questions. Uh, I got them from Dylan from Noble Records and um, I will put them in the description too and his video too uh, so you know where I got them from. Um, the first question is uh, what was the best purchase of 2023? Uh, for me it was Warhorse Red Sea. Um, comes with a lovely gatefold and last year was kind of a uh, kind of an interesting year for me for uh, in terms of collecting vinyl because I started to get really into the topic and check out um, uh, for rare records and rare labels so um, this one was definitely one of the highlights it's on a vertigo swirl label um, it's the original UK pressing so um, kind of great to have an orig original UK Vertigo, which are uh, not that easy to get, and <clears throat> actually I got it for a very good price on, on eBay, and I just couldn't wait, it was a buy day, buy, a buy, or um, put it in, buy it immediately, and I had to buy it just right away, because it was such a great uh, opportunity. Um, the next one, what was the last record you bought in 2023? Uh, I bought this one on December 30th, so um, this is the last one, it's the Electric Prunes, uh, Mass in F minor. Uh, it's kind of a concept album from the 60s, uh, and it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of a service on the Reprise label. It's <clears throat> music to service, and um, there's a lot of organ, and yeah, some monk wise choir, and all that, but um, otherwise then, um, the other record I think about it last year, um, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, it sounds a bit weird, but if you get used to it and get into it, it's actually a really nice record. So um, I'm happy that I got this early 60s pressing. Um, the next question is um, one artist uh, who, um, that released two albums in one year. For this I picked up Simon and Garfunkel, first Sound of Silence. And <clears throat> later released at the same year in October, uh, Parsley Sage Rose Moon Time. Uh, it's just Simon and Garfunkel, one of my all time favorite bands. Um, definitely my all time favorite um, duo. And on those two records, you find so many lovely harmonies and songs. And, and um, also, lyric wise, uh, talking about Paul Simon's work, it's just amazing. And definitely, Simon and Garfunkel, one of the top artists for me that I listen to the most, too. So, um, um, yeah, Simon and Garfunkel. Um, number four, uh, what if you could li only listen to music from one decade, which decade would you choose? Uh, I think, like, for most of, of, of the collectors, it's very, very difficult. I thought about it for a long time and I decided for the 70s. Um, though I mostly focused on the early 70s, like from 70 to 75, I think the most amazing, uh, Records were uh, made and released at this time, also in the 60s too, but um, I just thought about it a little bit and I counted a bit, a little bit and I have more favorite records in the 70s than in the 60s, so I would choose the 70s though. Um, as I said, it's very difficult. Um, yeah, number five, a band from Manchester. For this one, I chose The Hollies. Um, great band. Um, Originally with Graham Nash, who later joined Crosby, Stills and Nash, and um, actually I really love this record. It's uh, the Holly Sing Dylan. It's it's a bit it's a bit cheesy, and they have kind of of orchestral um, arrangements for the songs, especially like Blown in the Wind. But uh, I get in touch with this at a very young age, and I kind of have nostalgic feelings to it. And I just actually I love the sound of this. Uh, so. Um, I recommend to listen to Blown in the Window, it's a bit weird, uh, I shall be released, and mostly Wheels on Fire, those are great covers, so, band from Manchester, the Hollies. <clears throat> Next question to, uh, what artist did you listen to the most in 2023? Uh, I think this would be Pink Floyd, um, not this record uh, in particular, I just got it quite late in, the, in this year, but uh, Pink Floyd is definitely the artist I listen most to. And mostly when I work at work, um, it's uh, my colleague and I, we have kind of different tastes in music, but Pink Floyd is one of the rare um, 
rare artists we can agree on both so um like whenever i go there and i work like like my shift there's one point every time that one of us puts on the pink floyd records on the table turntable so definitely pink floyd uh the most listened artist in 2023 uh, the next one is seven, seven, seven inches, so we're talking about singles. Um, this is quite difficult because a few years ago I sold actually like my whole um, single collection. Um, it's just like I, I don't really enjoy it much. You can listen to one song, then you have to turn it around. and It's not my cup of tea. I, I decided to get rid of them just to keep a few. Um, most of which uh, I got signed because I don't sell autographs. Um, and that's the main reason why I don't have that many singles um, left, but uh, I can show you seven. So um, there's something special. This is a postcard from Mallorca, from, from Spain. And if you look closely, I don't know where you can see it in the middle here, is um, the little grooves and um, you can actually play it as a single. I think it's like kind of Spanish um, music uh, that you can listen to. And actually you had a chance to send it to your family at home and then they can get some of your uh, vacation feeling by listening to this postcard. <clears throat> the next one is The Beatles Revolution and Hey Jude. Uh, I picked up this one because this is the first ever record I got. Uh, it was a present from my dad. So um, I don't know whether it's original, I think so, on the Green Odeon label, but um, I will never ever give this away as it is the first vinyl I got. <clears throat> Next one, this one I kept too, it's called uh, Hare Krishna by the Radha Krishna Temple and it's just a mantra sing over and over again but I really like it, it's, uh, it, it really has, it gets you addicted, it's a great sound and you can sing the melody all day and it's very easy words and it has kind of a nice meaning like it, it's there to remain you or to remind you uh, to live now in the, in the moment and I just like listening to this. I think George Harrison produced it, or at least arranged that it was produced. Um, because you can see it was released on the Apple label. Next one, uh, How to California by the Eagles. Eagles is one of my all-time favorite bands, that's why I kept it. And also because of the B-side, Pretty Mates All in a Row, uh, which is, I think, next to How to California, my favorite track on, on, on the album. Next one is Donovan, uh, which I got signed uh, a few years ago. I met him at a show and actually I was waiting for a very long time to, to see him on stage perform. And this reminds me of this lovely evening. It was a great concert. And then after the show, he took some time and talked to everyone, uh, signed records and all that. So Donovan, Sunshine Superman. Next one is I'm Coming On by 10 years after this one is signed as well. And I picked up this one because I just love I'm Coming On. It's my favorite uh, 10 years after track. Same with this one, Love Is Like Oxygen, which is signed by Andy Scott. And a few years ago, this was like, um, in my teenage years, it was kind of my favorite song, at least favorite song by The Sweet. And I still really like it. It's a, it's a killer riff and yeah, seven inches. <laughs> Number eight, for party people. So people I would invite to my party that are related to music. Um, I thought about it and I would pick up definitely Joe Walsh because I think he's a really fun guy to hang out with. Uh, Carl Wilson by the Beach Boys. Um, I can't tell you why exactly. It's just like always felt like, okay, he seems to be like a humble guy. Nice to hang out and have a little chat. And the other two are uh, from the band. It's Leaving Home and Rick Danko. Both do, when you check out interviews with them, they seem super nice, super relaxed. Um, you can have a great time with them and those four just um, made music history. So I think there are a lot of great stories um, that they could tell. So those are my four, um, four musicians I would invite to my party. Mm. The next one is the question, uh, pick a record by someone that died in 2023. And I picked up David Lindley uh, who played for a long time in Jackson Brown and Jackson Brown band and I wanted to choose this one it's called Ale Rail X um, because it was a present by my aunt for my birthday and I didn't know anything about this artist and I just listened to it and I really really enjoyed the record it was kind of a, like a surprise thing to me because like talking about the cover and all that I thought like okay mm, doesn't seem to be like the typical stuff I listen to but um, I actually really really enjoyed it mostly like the 
reggae kind of influence and also the great covers just twist and shout it's it's a great cover and if you have like uh, the Beatles version in your in your head I think this one gives you a whole new turn to to that song um, so um, yeah David Lindy who unfortunately passed away last year uh, number 10 if you could only lo uh, listen to music from one country what would it be in my case I think it would be uh, the UK um, most of my favorite bands come from the UK um, also in the 60s I think they had like a really decent and, and unique sound in the studio like um, the early Pink Floyd the Beatles um, it's just like sound wise um, it's great and if, if I think about it like most of my favorite bands they come they come from UK so um, that would be my country of first choice though I guess it's uh, like this uh, century question a bit tricky but um, yeah UK number 11 um, um, I have to pick up three channels that I just discovered last year so um, I choose Floyd 43 he's a, from the German vinyl community and um, I think we're very very the same talking about the, the records that we collect and how we get into the into collecting and all that so I really enjoy his videos though they're in German but as a native it's no problem for me um, the other one is audiophile loss I have to admit that I uh, discovered him uh, already a few years ago but it's a great great channel um, by a great guy unfortunately he stopped making videos a few years ago but he's he's one of the main reasons why I decided to make videos too he's from the German vinyl community too but he's talking in English about records and he just got me into so many good albums and artists and, and labels so uh, I would definitely pick him and the next one is Psycho Platters Psych Psycho Platters um, he was just super kind he was one of the first guys who uh, put a comment uh, below one of my videos and then I checked out his YouTube channel so um, it's a very nice guy it was really nice uh, of him to, to uh, give me like a cheer up uh, under my video so uh, those are the free YouTube channels. Um, the next one is uh, I have to show a record that I bought as a teenager and I collect now for like 10 or 12 years something like that so most of the records I got I bought when I was a teenager but um, I choose those both two because those were the first records I bought at a record store um, and it was also my first time at a record store in general so um, they always have kind of a very special um, feeling to me those two and it, both are the Beatles it's help and let it be great records and another, another regret that I bought them and they always remind me of the first time checking out a record store in Munich and though it's closed now I still have kind of nostalgic feelings um, to those two records or at least to those times when I remember uh, getting in there and uh, yeah, persuading my friends to come with me and check the place out. So, um, yeah. Uh, the next one is a soul slash um, funk record. And to be honest, I don't listen to those uh, genres that much. I'm not into it yeah, that much. But um, at least when I checked out Discogs, it, it said this is a, kind of a soul record. So uh, I choose it. Though I don't fully agree, um, it definitely has some a lot of soul influence on it, uh, but I don't think it's a pure soul record, but anyway, it's still an amazing record. It's called uh, Melting Pot by Bukadine DMGs uh, on the sex label. Um, I just love the band. Um, Donald Duck Dunn and Steve Cropper who played at the Bruce, Bruce Brothers are on here too. Um, and just music-wise, it's a great record. And, and the members in the band back then, they were like one of the most skilled musicians at their time. Um, though it's difficult to say, I guess, but um, you know what I mean. Um, they're very, very talented and see the, the, those, this much, much talent on just one, one record. Uh, just really great. So, um, book of the and DMGs. Uh, the next question is uh, actually, there are like two questions in it. A uh, show record that everyone has and one record I think no one has. Um, first, first one is uh, I think Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Whoever gets into collecting vinyl, mostly like teenagers who just kind of made it big again, and some way in the past few years, whenever I check out record collections from people at my age, uh, maybe they have like 
five, ten, maybe twenty records, and it's mostly modern stuff. But you always find Dark Side of the Moon, which they got by an uncle, by their parents, whatever. So I think Dark Side of the Moon is like one of the most wanted records you can get, and um, it's just like a connection between every generation of vinyl collectors. Um, it's one of the maybe the classic album itself, and um, yeah, I think everyone has it in some way. And the next one, as I said, I think it's very difficult to, to pick a record. I think nobody has. Um, you can argue in some ways. So I pick up the Rolling Stones Life at um, Circus Corona. Um, this one is limited to 800 uh, records and this is number 478. So um, it's kind of unique if you think about a number and all that. Um, though I think I know there are like 800 other people out there who have this record, but um, it's not that common. It's a great bootleg from a great show. Actually, I checked out uh, the DVD, which is included in here too, and it's just an amazing show they did at the Circus Corner, which is a very small venue, or kind of small venue in, in Munich with like maybe 3,000, 2,000, 3,000 people, something like that. And um, it's a great bootleg, and I think not everyone has it. So, yeah. Um, the next one is a record I bought last year um, by, by a female artist. And for this one, I picked up Joni Mitchell Blue. Um, I can't say much about it. I just really love this record. I don't know who got me into Joni Mitchell, but even if you don't like her other work, you just have to listen to this album. It's 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 just amazing. Just just listen to it. I I can't actually describe it. It's so unique in its own way. Um, great lyrics, great instrumentation, great songs. It's great melodies. It's just some kind of a perfect record that. Uh, even if it's if you're not so much into female singers, if you're not so much into folk, into singer songwriter stuff, I think everyone can find something in this record that uh, he or she really likes and can appreciate. So, um, Johnny Mitchell, yeah. Um, my <laughs> okay. The next one is a video I have to pick that I. It's my favorite one that I made last year. Um, and for this one, I pick my Hamburg Hamburg Hall video. Um, because it reminds me of a really great time I had at the city, uh, I just went to one flea market and I had like a budget for my whole vacation. And no joke, I just went to the to the flea market and I spent every cent on it when I was there because there were so many amazing great records, great condition, great prices, um, the right pressings, all that. So, um, so far this was my best haul um, that I was or that I'm able to share with you. And then I get some nice, really nice feedback. Uh, just really um, was, was a really nice thing and I uh, really enjoyed doing it and uh, seeing the reactions of it. And my most favorite video by another um, VC member that I watched, um, to be honest, as I said, Audiofy Loss. I just kind of rediscovered him last year. And you can check out every video he made, uh, mostly like his, I can, always recommend his Vertigo Swirl or his Vertigo videos. Um, they are amazing. His haul videos when he bought whole collections and just shows that, uh, shows us every record he bought. It's amazing. Uh, I really love, the guy, I love this guy. Um, yeah, great videos. I just, I can recommend his YouTube channel. I will put him in the description too and um, maybe you check him out. Though it's really sad that he doesn't make any videos anymore, but um, it's okay, but he has a lovely stock of videos left, so um, amazing work. Um, the next one is a record from the 90s, which I would consider to be a, a, a classic record. And to be honest, I checked out my whole collection. I only have two records that were released in the 90s. It's just not my um, period. I'm not so much into it, but um, I think this one is kind of a um, classic, Violator by by uh, Deepish Mode, which I got uh, signed by Martin Gore um, last year. So um, I'm not that much into Deepish Mode, um, but this record, it's 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 not nice. <laughs> of course, uh, Personal Jesus is one of the old, or one of the greatest tracks, or one of those classic tracks that everyone knows uh, with, with an amazing riff. And um, I think to most people, this would be a classic. And it was released in the 90s, so um, this is my pick for this decade. 
Uh, number eight, and I really love this question. I think it's kind of uh, very creative. Um, I had to choose a cover uh, in which I would like to live in. And for this one, I picked up Tales from Topographic Ocean by Yes. And the artwork, uh, I just, I preferred the outside, not the inner sleeve, not the gatefold. Um, the artwork was done by Roger Dean, like most of the covers from Yes. And I just love his style, his, his fantasy mixed, lovely landscapes. And they have something very peaceful to me. And I think that's the reason why I would like to live in this album cover. Um, though it's not my favorite Yes album. Actually, it's pretty low on the list, um, at least from the records that I have on vinyl at home. But um, the artwork is just, as always, uh, outstanding by Roger Dean. And um, I think I would pick up this one because it's kind of chill, relaxed. There's a lot of to discover and uh, I can check out those lovely landscapes. Um, next question is, I have to pick up a record that I'm so familiar with that it's kind of a crazy hits records to me because I know all the song and all the all songs and all the tracks and for this one I picked up Propaganda by Sparks um, it's just like there whenever I read any song on the list uh, that's on this record I just instantly have the melody in my head um, I just know all of them it's it's a very unique record it's um, maybe not everyone's cup of tea but um, it's great work it's it's as I said it's very unique in its own way and it makes a lot of fun to listen to and I think the Mayo Brothers are just one of the most creative dudes in music history ever. If we check out all the other records they made over the period, over their career, they all sound like Sparks but every record sounds differently and kind of unique. So um, propaganda it is for me, yeah. And the last one is a record that was released in 1974. For this one I pick uh, Epitaph Outside the Law, uh, which was released on Membrane, I guess. And it's double nice because I uh, bought this record last year. I got it in a collection and I also uh, went to a live show of Epitaph. And so you can see three mem members of um, this album are still playing today. And um, they were really humble. They, they uh, spent time before and after the show and talked to the fans and signed every record. So, um, Epitaph, amazing record. Check it out. Outside the law, I think it's one of their. I think it's the biggest success. Um, yeah, it's just really nice record. If you can have a chance to check out the band Epitaph, um, they're touring all over Germany. Uh, I think sometimes in the UK, but I'm not one hundred percent sure about it. Um, then you should uh, give it a try. So. Um, that's it for the Vinyl Tech uh, 2023, no 2024 actually, <laughs> and um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, last year was amazing. As I said, I just started to get really into collecting and and then uh, investing more money, more time, uh, getting more no knowledge. So uh, it definitely was a big step for me forward, and I'm really looking forward. To to see what 2024 comes up with. So I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.